If you were to go to the Great Basin today, you'd find a region containing some of the most beautiful arid landscapes North America has to offer. But if one were to go back in time to the Middle Holocene, you'd find it distinctly hotter and drier. With such air conditions, one may be inclined to think that the region was abandoned by people. However, skilled and adaptable indigenous Americans were thriving during this dry period in the Great Basin. These people modified their hunting technology, replacing earlier styles of lanceolate or stemmed projectile points with a new type of haft, side notch projectile points. These side notch points are called northern side notch points and may have been a simple stylistic change or were perhaps intended to be better suited to people's needs during Middle Holocene conditions. In this video, I replicate a northern side notch projectile point and discuss the lifestyle of Middle Holocene hunter foragers in the Great Basin. Around 7,600 years ago, Mount Mazama in Oregon erupted, resulting in a huge ash deposit in a large portion of the western US and Canada. This ash layer is used as a temporal marker in the Great Basin geological sequence. This event could have easily caused the northern Great Basin to be abandoned for centuries, but it appears that its inhabitants only left for about 100 years or so at most. It is only after this ash deposit that we see the presence of large side notch points in the Great Basin archaeological record. This style continued in use until about 4,500 years ago. These northern side notch points are generally large, weighing more than 1.5 grams, and were used to tip it at ladle darts. The defining traits of northern side notch points are their large size, distinct shape, and their notching. The notches of these points were not to be U-shaped and parallel to the base, but also sometimes were angled slightly upwards. The bases on these points were generally made to be concave, and the outline of their blades ranged from triangular to lanceolate. When flint napping these points, Middle Holocene people almost exclusively used obsidian, with only a small percentage being made from other materials like chert. Unique traits found in some specimens include beautifully patterned pressure flaking or a finely serrated edge. I'm flint napping my replica northern side notch point from a cobble of obsidian given to me by a fellow archaeologist friend. Here, you will see me make a larger, more lanceolate example of this type, as opposed to the more common triangular shape. The peoples who made northern side notch points lived in small family groups. They lived as mobile hunter-gatherers, occupying camps for a brief time before moving on to other locations after resources were depleted. A defining characteristic of sites dating to this time period is their close proximity to water, a critical resource needed to endure a harsher, more arid climate. Although water provided the vital hydration needed for survival, it also provided another purpose. By having the campsites located so close to water, these ancestral Americans were able to have easier access to animals that provided food, along with other materials, such as bones and hides. The preferred locations for occupations seem to be focused near flowing bodies of water, such as streams or rivers. Other bodies of water, such as lakes, ponds, springs, and seeps, were the other locales that would have been highly valued. Overall, the lithic toolkits we find at northern side notched sites tend to be fairly generalized, meaning that the tools were likely used for multiple purposes. Besides projectile points, they made bifaces, retouched flake tools, and expedient flake tools. They also used ground stone tools like monos and matates to grind up plant foods. These grinding tools were also fairly expedient, lacking the formal styles that are present in the sites of their descendants. In rare cases of excellent preservation, artifacts such as multiple warp sandals, spiral weft sandals, and twined basketry have been preserved. 
One extraordinary example of the ingenious hunting techniques used by middle Holocene hunter-gatherers can be found in the Clan Alpine Mountains of Nevada. These hunter-forager populations were using ambush locations to hunt entire herds of bighorn sheep. The Mount Augusta site is an excellent example of one of these locations. It is comprised of 125 surface rock features, called cairns, in addition to a large scatter of stone tools. The cairns at Mount Augusta are piles of rocks that are generally circular and average 2 to 3 meters, with a height of 30 to 50 centimeters. The site is located at the mouth of a canyon which drains the water from the west side of Mount Augusta. These cairns are arranged to occupy a narrow strip of slope adjacent to the canyon entrance, widening to about 150 meters in the northwest area of the site to create something of a funnel. The location of the site appears to be ideally located to capitalize on the seasonal movements of bighorn sheep. During the winter, the sheep remain and dwell at lower elevations, and during the summer months, they like to migrate up to the higher elevations. Projectile points, bifaces, and flake tools are found scattered evenly across the site, with flake debris deposited in several locations where prehistoric people like to flint nap. The lithic assemblage is characteristic of a hunting assemblage, with many of the projectile points found in a broken or worn down state. Four northern side notch points were found at the site, and later groups used the site more intensively. A very short distance from the site, archaeologists have uncovered a deposit of butchered bighorn sheep bones, an area that appears to have served as the designated area for the people hunting at Mount Augusta to process their kills. A number of the feature arrangements at Mount Augusta exhibit a surprising degree of uniform spacing, with around 10 to 15 meters between each cairn. Some cairns of particular interest have their rocks arranged around a central axis, leaving a hole reminiscent of a post hole. Based on their size, shape, and location within the cairn, these likely held a post or similar upright structure within this space. These poles could have functioned as dummy hunters, like scarecrows for the bighorn sheep, or as anchors for brush barriers to help passively corral game towards hunters waiting in ambush. Another possibility is that these serve to anchor netting to entangle sheep. At least one incredibly preserved big game hunting net has been found in the broader region, dating to a slightly earlier time frame. This net, when unraveled, would have been 50 to 60 meters long and about 1.5 to 2 meters in height. Bighorn sheep caught in a similar net at Mount Augusta would have been disoriented and struggling to free themselves which would allow hunters to get close and kill them with either an atlatl dart or a handheld spear. The Middle Holocene people in the Great Basin who made northern side notch points were masters of their environment, and despite environmental conditions that were distinctly less favorable than those of today, they made the Great Basin their home and thrived. They made a light impression on the landscape, as they were highly mobile, and at sites like Mount Augusta, we get a glimpse into their complex cultural practices and sophisticated hunting technology. They managed to use the landscape to aid in employing a possible driveline, or hunting net array, to hunt herds of bighorn sheep. Unsurprisingly, after the Middle Holocene, their descendants continued to master the landscape of the Great Basin, leaving many incredible archaeological sites for the people of today to get a glimpse into the rich and illustrious past of this region.